Welcome to Creeping It Real. I am Judah. Over the weekend, I watched a superb 80s horror film called Zombie Nightmare. I am being quite facetious when I say superb. This is not one of those movies that you would say is so bad it's good, but it's definitely a product of its time. And though I wouldn't recommend it in general, it definitely has some fun in it to be had by watching it, definitely if you're with some friends. And uh, this movie was picked up by uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000, you know, in mock, which it should be, and this is a perfect movie for that. But in general, I, I did have fun. I watched it on my own, and uh, I definitely laughed at some of the horrendous uh, dialogue in it, but but it's not a, it's not a good movie. I'm giving this a 4 out of 10. This is a zombie movie, obviously. And I got to tell you that back in the Walking Dead uh, TV series, I, I was a huge fan of that. I, I was invested up until season six. Uh, at the very end, they introduced Negan and you knew he was going to kill somebody. And I think they held who he was going to kill until season seven, they revealed, you know, in the premiere and it was Glenn and Glenn was one of my favorite characters. I, I was not a fan of Negan. So I checked out after season six, uh, I checked out at that same time. Uh, I was very involved in playing a game called zombie side, like l regularly, if not twice a week, at least once a week, me and my family were getting together and playing this game zombie side which is a fantastic game but i kind of got burnt out on the whole zombie thing it just felt really played out and i just kind of got sick of it so i generally stay away from zombie movies at this point in my life we did side note uh we enjoyed zombie side that board game so much that one year we uh did a short film based off of it and we entered it into Gen Con and we were accepted and it, it showed at Gen Con. So you can find that online. Uh, we called it a minor setback. That being said, I, ha I had a lot of fun with zombies at one point, but just really got overplayed for me and got tired of it. However, I decided over the weekend that I would give this one a try. And this is not so much original as far as uh, its plot goes, but it's not the uh, groups of people trying to survive zombies coming after them. It's uh, This is more of a zombie revenge kind of a thing. All spoilers here, by the way, all spoilers. So the movie starts off, there's this coach, He's, he's teaching some kids, or he's supposed to be some famous baseball player. I'm not really sure. The synopsis makes it seem like he's supposed to be some kind of a famous baseball player, but I just picked up that he was some kind of beloved coach in this city. His wife is sitting there watching him coach these kids. His young son is there watching him coach these kids. They love him, obviously. You can tell this man is perfect. This coach happens to see these two greasers. They're going to teach this uh, black girl a lesson, you know, because she's black and she needs to be taught a lesson. So he goes to her rescue and one of these greasers stabs him instantly. Like he starts spitting blood out and he, he just dies just like that. You know, no chance whatsoever. Skip forward and the young son is now a young adult. And he's a baseball player. He's got super long hair like me and he, he's ripped, you know, just like me. And he's beloved. He's a, he's a good kid. He, he saves this uh, small shop owner from being robbed. His mom loves him. As he, after he, he just gets done doing this heroic thing by saving the shop owner from being robbed. And he walks out in this car full of hooligans, run him over, and they just take off. I've seen a lot of characters in movies that I just wished would die. I can't think of another group of teenagers that annoyed me more. No, that's a lie. In the movie, talk to me. Every one of those characters, I could not stand. Now, this movie starred Adam West. That was the big, you know, 
star power in that. But the dude doesn't show up until like 45 inch minutes into the movie. And he has a generally a small part. When I was looking up the cast, what I realized, my most hated character in this movie, his name is Jim. He's a piece of trash. He's, he's supposed to be like 17 in this movie. They're high schoolers. This kid is played by Sean Levy, the director of Deadpool and Wolverine, which is funny to me because I didn't know who he was. He, I just started seeing him pop up. And I'm like, who's this guy? And I would start watching things. I was like, oh, he's the director of Deadpool. So I was surprised and laughed when I saw that this character was played by Sean Levy. Now, he has some of the most choice dialogue in this movie ever. And he's such a piece of trash. These kids get into this club somehow. Somehow they make it in there, even though they're 17. And they're causing trouble. And some guy, first of all, they're in a club, okay? There's music playing. People are having fun. They are being quite rowdy. But they, they bump into some dude. And this, this guy's like, hey, why don't you keep it down? Which to me just was really absurd because they're in a club. And uh, the John Levy character, Jim, he turns around. He has this like butter knife. And he's like, why don't you just, why don't you just find someplace else to sit? You know? And the guy's like, whoa, butter knife. And so he leaves. And then John Levy turns around and says to his group of friends, everybody wants to be a tough guy, but it only works for us real tough guys. Fantastic dialogue. Then a bouncer comes over. He's like, I didn't know school got out early. And they're all like, <laughs> Jim, Sean Levy's character, what are you going to be, tough guy? Anyway, this bouncer grabs him, throws him all out. Here's where more choice dialogue comes on. He's like, y'all come back now real soon when you're over 21. And Sean, with all of his like sweet burns, says, I wouldn't come back to this hole if I was 41. Mic drop right there. As I mentioned, this, this good kid, Tony, who gets ran over the car, this group of jerk teenagers drive off. They, they stop. Some of them are frustrated and they're like, oh, no, what do we do? But they kind of played off like, yeah, he, it, it's good. The world isn't going to miss him. He, he was just another one of them. And they're talking to Jim, Sean Leaves' character. And they're like, how are you feeling? And he's like, you know what? I kind of liked it. I'm glad that I killed him. Taking his life, feel, I feel power. A massive piece of trash, this kid. Massive piece of trash. Let's go back to them hitting this kid. Instead of them calling the cops, the shop owner that he had just saved from being robbed comes out and he's like, oh, Tony, what am I going to do? Your mom is going to be so sad. He's Italian, by the way. So instead of calling the cops or an ambulance or something, he grabs a couple dudes, they load him in a car, and they take his dead body back to their mom back to the mom. She's crying and she's all like, you got to go get me so-and-so. I can't remember her name. My apologies. Well, so-and-so happens to be the black woman that her husband saved from being raped back in the day. Now, years later, she is a Haitian voodoo priestess. You see where this is going? So she goes and she meets with her and she's like, I need you to bring my son back to, from the dead. And she's like, well, we can do this, but he, he ain't coming back normal. He ain't coming back as the Tony you know. It was more so just bring him back to avenge his death kind of a thing. So she does her voodoo priestess stuff. Tony comes back from the dead. She hands him his baseball bat. And here's where things start getting fun. He goes off on the killing rampage to uh, get revenge on everybody that was part of his death. I, I would immediately go after Jim, that piece of trash, but he doesn't. A side note, this movie is quite short. It's, it's like an hour and uh, 20 minutes, but there is so much of it that is just filled with scenes of them driving cars through the city and like sticking their hands out the windows and pointing at people and hooping and hollering and, and uh, you know, music playing over it. Motorhead and some other bands. So, and they were so long, like over long. And then there was a scene with this guy and this girl playing tennis that was so pointless. And it was clearly just left in there to stretch the time limit because this was originally supposed to be a theatrical release, but they 
ended up not doing that. So these absurd long driving scenes with music and this absurd long tennis match with music. So they're at the school. The uh, janitor comes in. He's like, hey, uh, you going to lock up? And they're like, yeah, we're all good. The janitor full well knows that these two are about to go get it on in the school. And he just gives them a nod and a wink like, hey, you got this. They go to do their thing. And the zombie comes in, breaks the dude's neck, and then begins to pursue this blonde chick throughout the school. Now, this is one of my favorite things ever. Let me just show you this really fast. He's chasing me. Do you see that? Clearly, there was an exit right there. There was an exit right there. Did she take it? No. For some reason, she did not take that emergency exit. She decided to run somewhere else that blocks her in and she gets killed. Absurdity. She passed so many emergency exits, but she chooses to stay in the school running around. Side note, which I found quite funny. Her and this, her boyfriend from this movie are supposed to get into this like hot tub and, you know, start and getting all smoochy and stuff. And apparently from the uh, script, she was supposed to be topless. This is the story I read and I find it quite funny. Her dad happened to show up that day of filming to, to watch things. And she says to the, you know, director, Hey, there, there is no way, there's no way I'm getting topless in front of my dad. So they made changes. Uh, she kept her, her bra on and she kept that like nighty or whatever on so that nothing could be seen, which, you know, good on them. Cause honestly, when I was first watching this, I was very surprised cause I was like, Oh, here's, here come the boobies, but no. So good on them. And uh, good on dad for, for stopping by and uh, making sure everything was on the up and up for his daughter. So he kills these two. The cops come in. They're super confused. They're like, oh, so, so they're making like weird observations. Do you, if they're, first, they're like, it was a murder-suicide. And this one cop's like, yeah, so he beat this girl to death and then he went and he snapped his own neck with his bare hands. And the other cop's like, oh, with his bare hands? And I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do we know? How do we know? Doesn't matter. I guess you could, if there was bruising, I guess you could come to the conclusion that somebody did it with their bare hands. So they're all freaking out and they're like, this, this guy has to be massive if he's breaking people's necks with his bare hands. So this cop goes back to the uh, station and he's telling the, I don't know, the commissioner or whoever the head of the department is. And that's Adam West. And Adam West is really just like, you better just take care of this. We don't want any more kids dying. The weird thing is he's smoking a cigar. But he's holding the cigar very sus. Not like he's used to smoking a cigar, but more he's holding it like he's smoking a blunt. Made me laugh. But you get these bad vibes from Adam West just from the, from the get-go. And he kind of slightly threatens this cop. And he's like, and we don't want any more dead kids on our hands. You get what I'm saying? Um, I mean... Maybe, I guess, perhaps. The zombie then moves on to Jim, Sean Levy's character, which, by the way, he's, I mentioned before, he's a real douchebag. He keeps hitting on this chick at this uh, drive-in, this diner or whatever, and she keeps, like, blowing him off. And in one scene, she says, how old are you? And he says, 21. And she's like, more like 17 and then she's all like I like hanging out but I don't rob the cradle and then she goes I'm old enough to be your older sister and he says the most cringe thing I ever good I've always wanted to make it with my older sister Almost, I threw up a little bit in my mouth now there's a movie I think it's called Night of the Demon there's a scene where this little brother hides in the closet of his sister She's getting dressed. Her shirt is off, but she has a bra on. He has a mask on. He jumps out of the closet and scares her. And she's like, oh, you little jerk or something like that. But before he leaves, he makes some really weird comment to her. Nice 
poop, sis. If they get any bigger, you're not going to be able to tie your shoes. And when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, that is so icky. That is so icky. But at the same time, I was dying laughing. And I thought, there's no way I will ever hear something more cringe than that. I was wrong. When Sean Levy says, I always wanted to make it with my older sister, I, I don't even know what to say. It, it was absurd. Later on in the movie, again, he approaches this chick and she's like, look, I've had enough of you and your juvenile dick jokes. Get out of here. Stop bugging me. Then he proceeds to sexually assault her. The zombie comes and kills him. Puts a baseball bat right through him. Here's where there becomes a bit of a twist. The cops end up bringing in some big, strong dude. It was actually the guy who originally tried to rob that uh, convenience store at the beginning that Tony stopped. And they're like, look at this huge guy. And he has, he has a, a history of robbery and violence. This is clearly our guy. He's strong enough to snap somebody's neck with their bare hands. Clearly it was him. But the guy on the case, he's just not buying it. He's looking through some evidence. And Adam West is like, no, case is closed, man. Just let it go. Let it go. Here, bro. Have a puff. Chill out. But he won't let it go. And he starts looking through some of the crime photos. And then he noticed that the, uh, the voodoo priestess is in the background of several of these photos. So he comes and he shows it to Adam West. He's like, look, dude, this, this woman, she's in like a bunch of these crime scene photos. Why, why is that? And Adam West is like, look, man, chill out. We caught the guy. Case is closed. Wait, 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 wait. And he's like, oh, okay, you're the boss. And he leaves. But then Adam West... You can see he's like sweating and he calls some dude up. And he's like, bro, that chick, she's on the move. And you're like, what? Here's the twist. Here's the twist. Adam West is actually the dude, the young guy who tried to rape the black girl at the beginning. He, Adam West is the guy who stabbed the coach. And killed him. So now he's freaking out that this voodoo priestess is on the go and she's going to come get him. He calls the father of Jim. Jim is Sean Levy's character. That father was the second greaser involved in the rape and murder, rape of the black woman and the murder of the coat. There you have it. There's a big twist. I can't say it was amazing, but I was kind of like, oh, okay, well, that's, I don't know bring that in on there. I, I, I guess let's go for that. Tony, the zombie goes and he kills Jim's dad. Adam West is the last person. Oh, and not just Jim's dad. Then he goes and he cares, kills the last two punks that were in the car that ran him over. Now this, this part of the lore that apparently zombies that have been raised from the dead to wreak revenge or gain revenge. Once their mission has been complete, they lose their powers. So apparently he's weak now and he, he doesn't have strength to finish off Adam West. They're in, if somehow they make it to a grave. Adam West shoots the zombie, Tony kills him. And then the voodoo, voodoo priestess is trying to raise, like cast another spell. And Adam West shoots her, the police officer who's been in this investigation. He's there and he says to Adam West, what are you doing? Why, why are you killing all these people? And he's like, oh, he starts, you know, divulging the whole story about him killing the dude. And the police officer's like, what, N now you're going to kill me? And he's like, yeah, that was kind of my plan. Well, then a second zombie pops up from the ground, grabs Adam West and starts pulling him down to what you can only assume is hell. And he's, he's crying out to this other police officer, just kill me, just kill me. And that police officer is like, yeah, it's not my thing. Kind of not my thing. And Adam West gets dragged to hell. Was it a happy ending? I don't know. A lot of people died. Sean Levy got killed. That's about the only good part in this movie. After retalking through this, I got to tell you, I don't know. Maybe I liked it more than I thought. It was so ridiculous. The other thing that was weird is Tony, the guy who, uh, the zombie, the good kid, he has soup. I told you he has super long hair. As he progresses as the zombie, his hair gets shorter. I, I'm not sure what the mechanics are with that. What I recommend this movie, if you're just craving 80s nostalgia, goofy horror, oh yeah, this is this is good. 
good good times uh, to watch with a friend to just laugh. It might be better to watch it in Mystery Science Theater 3000, but I had a decent time watching it without their commentary. I had my own inner commentary. I was laughing about, you know, horrible things that were going on in the movie. But it's not a great movie. I, I stand by my four out of ten. So this movie had a budget of one hundred and eighty thousand dollars, and it grossed uh, one and a half million. So you know, not so bad there. That's all I got for you. I'm Judah. This has been creeping it real. See you later.